Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Today I'm going to present you 15 things about the nuclear winter mode to help you better understand how everything works. Well, 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 the nuclear winter mode has been out since Monday. It came live right after they announced it in EA last Sunday. And things have been pretty decent, in my opinion. I had the chance to try this mode quite a lot in the past three days, more or less. And I now feel comfortable to share a few things with you in order to help you better understand this mode as well, how everything works and how can you perform better and actually achieve victory. But that's probably going to take a few videos for this one. I'm basically going over the basics and then I will be publishing some others with tips, strategy and, you know, the usual guides that I do. But let's move to the very basics of nuclear winter. If you are new to Battle Royale games, then I advise you to watch the full section of this video because it's very important to understand how to actually manage and play in nuclear winter mode. Now, I will go over the very, very basics very shortly and then I will go in depth in, you know, section by section. But overall, you start the game in a loading lobby. You can choose your perks, they are different than adventure mode. Also, if you want to change your attributes, your special points, you need to go into adventure and then you can adjust your perks in nuclear winter mode. Then you will be a forward to this map where you and your team can pick your landing or spawning points. And after the time is up, you will see where all your lobby enemies have spawned which can give you a very good idea if you are spawning alone or if you need to be careful and watch for enemies right when you land and start playing the game. So what to do once you are in game, start looking for crates right away. I suggest you to play in third person mode as well because it's easier to see other players and to shoot in my opinion, but maybe in your experience it might be different. Also, if you spawn with other players, it's important to, you know, spot where they are and take them down before they do that to you. You know, it's very difficult to defend a sneak attack from enemies, so the best defense here is to be offensive. But scavenging, looting and killing enemies is not everything you have to do in nuclear winter mode. You also need to keep an eye in the progress of the storm because you need to keep moving towards the safe zones as the storm progresses. Otherwise, you will be in trouble because if you get inside the fire, like right now, you will most likely die if you are not close to the safe zone. Now, in this mode, stamina is very, very tricky. You have a very little amount to balance the game and you run out of it all the time. Keep in mind that you can build structures and loot turrets that can shoot in your behalf as well as spawn a base. You can easily use walls and foundations to create some sort of a tower or fortress. For defense purposes, it's very handy, especially at the uh, end circles where the space is very, very small and you need to fight groups of four people. So keep that in mind and use it to your advantage. Now, it's not only strategy that matters in here. You can easily kill players with certain weapons, such as a Tesla rifle or a minigun or even a 50 call. It really depends on your playstyle, but there are definitely better guns and armor than others. So you should keep that in mind when you are fighting in end game. But things don't always go well and you will not always win. This is battle royale and that's totally normal. So don't be too upset when you die early or you don't really make it to the end. It's part of this mode. So and let's move on to the next points and I promise they won't be as long as the first one. 
Now this is an obvious one, the vote 51 is now open and Zags is like the leader of the vote, it's the one that it's governing everything and its voice you will hear during every single trial. Now as you progress in your rank you will be able to access new rooms such as the overseer room that requires a rank of 10 to access. You will also be able to find a terminal that requires rank 91 to access and a locked door that needs also rank 100 to go through. There are some things that you can interact with but there are no major lore in here until you get to a very high rank as I mentioned before. So enjoy the view, interact with a few objects such as spinning the globe or, you know, doing your laundry or even ringing the alarm clock. That's going to be about everything you can do in the overseer's room. As a battle royale, the nuclear winter mode has a new rank system called the overseer and there are eight main points that will determine the amount of experience caps and rewards that you will get every time you do a trial. Now, in this case, we won, and as you can see, you have eight points in the summary, and basically, your final rewards depends on the time you have survived, your placement, the players you have killed, the players you have downed, also NPC kills, elite kills, nukes you have launched, and player revives. So these eight points determine your final uh, rewards and you should keep that in mind when you are playing. If you play Fallout 76 for a while and if you have tried the survival mode then you know that gear can heavily impact the PvP experience. Moreover, your gear and especially three star weapons and things like explosive and a bloodied can easily one-shot anyone even in power armor. Now in nuclear winter mode all of these things don't exist. Bethesda has tried to make a fair environment for everyone and whether you have just started playing now or if you are playing since the beta times then it doesn't matter because the gear you get in each trial is basically everything you can find yourself there. It doesn't bring any gear from adventure mode and that's pretty cool. Otherwise we will be seeing the same as survival, one hit, one kill. And that's not really fun and you don't need any strategy at all to do that. So thumbs up for Bethesda for bringing these mechanic adjustments to nuclear winter. Now I want to tell you something else here about the loot cases, which there are three main types. The blue one is like the normal loot box, then you have the yellow which is better quality and finally you have the rare ones which are orange so you should always keep that in mind. You will also hear a beep when you are close to orange loot boxes. Now you can select a group of friends to play with, you can go pre-made, all you have to do is go to the main menu, invite your friends and then queue up for nuclear winter mode. If you don't do that, if you go solo, that's also fine, you will end up in a random team, but when the time is up after you are in the lobby, you will be asked to select a spawn place. Don't forget that spawning away from your teammates is a huge disadvantage, so always try to stay together in one single point. Even if you end up with many other enemies near you, at least you will have the advantage to have, you know, two to three people more with you, which is always helpful. Now, don't forget that there is a storm out there and that the safe circles will keep getting smaller and smaller. The fire will move and if you are not aware of this, you will end up being inside the fire and then things can get really ugly and you will end up dying inside of it because stamina can be a huge problem in this mode. Following the balances that Bethesda has implemented, you will only start with your Vault 51 costume 
and your pit boy that's it you will have to find everything else to make your way into battle and as i mentioned before you can forget all your weapons all your gear all your aid items everything you have in adventure will stay behind with a very few exceptions so make sure to loot boxes to kill players get their stuff and kill npcs as well and loot what they drop what about NPCs? Well, Bethesda has also rebalanced them and they are not very easy to kill. You can basically want to hit normal mobs and even the elite and the stronger ones like uh, Scorch Beast, you can kill them very, very easily. Even more when you have a perk equipped that allows you to do 100 damage more to NPCs. So you shouldn't worry too much about them. Just take them down and take their loot because they can drop some really nice stuff. Just like almost everything got balanced, camps also got a very, very intense rebalance. And now you can actually build like defense structures, you can loot them all over uh, the game, you can get turrets, walls, and these uh, tower defense things. You can also uh, build your camp with foundations, walls, anything you want really. So people are basically making defense towers in nuclear mode because all we need here is defense really. We don't need, you know, fancy beds, fancy furniture. All we need is walls to protect ourselves and some height to be on top of the enemies down there. But you can build pretty much anything you want if you have the time and well, if you have teammates to protect you. As part of Fallout 76, the nuclear winter mode wouldn't be complete without nukes. Now, Bethesda has rebalanced the system by making the nuke radius much smaller. And to launch one, you need to find a nuke case and also four nuke codes among your team. You can drop the codes, so if each member gets one code, that's enough to launch it. Then it works pretty much like in Adventure, you just open the map, you select uh, the area you want to launch it, wait a few seconds and then it goes boom and it kills everything in that radius including your teammates. So if you don't get back, you're going to die for sure. <laughs> there is no second chances like inside the fire, you will simply die. There is a new and exclusive perk system for Nuclear Winter. I am still collecting these new perks, but I can tell you guys that there will be a lot of strategy required for a great build because there are many perks. I think there are over 70 perks just for this mode. And some of them require a huge amount of points like seven or nine, which means you will probably have to change your build in adventure to be able to equip these high tier cards. And that's not so easy because in adventure you have complete different perks and you also need skill points to change points and cards. It's difficult, but I believe that you can make really optimal builds depending on your playstyle. For example, you can become a team medic in Nuclear Winter. Great news! The VAT system is now disabled for all enemy players. Unlike the survival mode where it works and it's really OP because you can simply automatically select someone and one-shot them without doing anything any aim at all because the system does it for you. In nuclear mode you have to do all the aiming for yourself, there is nothing to help you here. However, there is an exception for NPCs, you can still use VATs, you can select them with this system and you can take them down as well, but for players it doesn't work and it should be that way, otherwise it will be too unfair and that's not something we want in this battle royale mode, is it now? There is uh, hacking and pickpock perks and they allow you to simply do that. Hack terminals and unlock chests that are, well, locked. And is it useful? Yes. Especially the terminals, you can get a chance to request a weapon and one of them can be a Tesla rifle, which is really, really strong right now. You can also get an automatic grenade launcher, which is pretty decent, I must say. 
and overall you can request other things like steam packs or a nuclear code or even reveal your enemy's locations so terminals are very very useful if you're playing in a pre-made i advise you to get uh, this perk at least one of you should have it because you are increasing your chances to find really good stuff Let's go over the few things that carry on from Adventure Mode. The first is your special points that you can see under Stats. It will be the exact ones as you have in Adventure. And then you will also have access to your outfits through the Atomic Shop. You can even equip everything you own by simply marking them as your favorite. On PC, Enter is the default key. You can wear outfits. Masks, power armor skins, by the way, you get some of them as rewards for leveling up, as well as weapon skins and player icons. I got so many things from the Overseer uh, ranking system and I'm just level 22 right now. So that's pretty much what you can carry on and equip. As I just mentioned, you will access a lot of things as you rank up as the Overseer. You will also get a lot of things for your camp. I went through some of my rewards and I noticed that I have all the loot boxes in my uh, camp. I have the plans now to create them. I also have an Overseer chair which looks very, very nice. It's like a gaming chair. It's blue with the Vault 51 symbol on it. I really like it. I even replaced it with my old black chair. And then you also get some statues, which I didn't really find. I have to check better later. But overall, you get furniture and decor for your camp as you rank up. Now, that's in addition to all the stuff in the Atomic Shop that I just mentioned before. Keep in mind that you can use all of them in any character you might have. As the last point, I have decided to share something with you guys that I think it's important to know. One of them is that you can't get sick in nuclear mode, there are no sicknesses at all, but you can have access to mutations, that's right. I managed to find two mutation serums in orange loot boxes. I wasn't really recording at the time so I can show you here but I assure you that it is possible to find it it's very very rare though also you might have some mutation every now and then when you are exposed to high and sudden amounts of radiation I also managed to do it once but never again so maybe I will understand how it really works maybe it's just another really rare 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 thing to achieve and these were basically the 15 things that I really think every Fallout 76 player should know before playing the nuclear winter mode. The learning curve is not so easy, as I said, especially if you have never played a battle royale game before. So I hope these things will give you an upper hand in your upcoming matches. And I also hope that you have learned something new with this video. I also would like to personally thank five players and friends that have helped me test and learn this mode together and their names are right here in the screen. I would also like to personally thank my patrons for their support and for allowing me to continue this channel and well upgrading my gear. I have just recently purchased a Blue Yeti microphone because my old one was not working so fine anymore. And that's going to be everything. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe in the bottom below. Also, feel free to check my Patreon page if you would like to go further and support me in other ways. That's going to be everything, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in the next video. Adios. Bye bye.